Hi Libra, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here. I have already laid out the cards because I was talking. I had already gotten like 12 minutes into it and I was just like babbling. And I don't want to babble. So I'm going to do this over again. And I wanted to let you know that I have picked three oracle cards and one uh, Rider Waite Tarot card. And before I begin, I just want to tell you about some of the transits that are happening. This month, I'm recording this on November 1st. In November, you're going to have a lot of energy in the second house of earned income. Especially after that first week, you're going to have Venus there, you're going to have Jupiter there for a whole year, the Sun is there, and then on the 18th, you're going to have a new moon, a new beginning in the second house of earned income, and also the house that deals with your self-esteem as well as your possessions, maybe your prized possessions. So this is the house that Venus rules, so that's your ruler, although it is the house of Taurus and not Libra. So you understand what this house represents and you resonate with what it represents. But the thing that is most promising about this is that Mars will also be going here in December, on December 10th to be exact, and that gives even more of a drive for you to achieve certain things financially. While Mars is in your first house, though, for that first six weeks, you're going to be very aggressive, or at least assertive, and this is very good for any kind of business dealings, promotion that you have, self-promotion, because the first house is yourself. And it's like you are totally a person trying to present yourself in a certain way to others. You have a confidence, a, um, I would call it a sense of courage, a courageous demeanor that allows you to really go after what you want in a big way. And if you're looking for work, if you're looking for clients, even if you're looking for love, this can benefit you. But I'm keeping this theme to career matters, money matters, and job prospects, okay? And the other thing that is, let me see if there's other things. Um, in terms of, I think that's all I really wanted to say about that. I think that's enough, though, because, for instance, with Jupiter, we're talking about a whole year of it being in your second house. So this can really expand you. You may come up with multiple income streams, ways that you work for money. And some of them may be more on the passive side, even. The second house is about money that you earn, but I don't think that necessarily means that um, it has to be totally passive, like some kind of a dividend. It could be something that you start the ball rolling and then it just starts paying off for you. So let me just talk about these cards because this is um, a tarot card, the Two of Wands, which deals with having to make a choice when it's a number two, there's a duality there. Do I do this? Do I do that? And Librans tend to have issues making choices. This is because you can see all sides of an issue. And uh, this is why Librans make good judges, because they can be very impartial. Oh, by the way, let me show you that this man is holding a globe. So basically, and you see the mountains in the background, the, the water, the body of water. Wands connect to creative endeavors and careers, business. This could be your own business. Okay, so in some cases you may be working two jobs. And 
especially in December when Mars goes into that sector, you may be like kind of uh, working overtime earning money because you're doing it in more than one location or with more than one company or, you know, splitting it between your own thing and a day job. But it can also indicate, should I stay or should I go? I call it the clash card because of that song. And so it could deal with relocation, but it could also be dealing with two different career tracks. So you may have, um, you may be torn about whether or not you want to go off in a different direction or not. And I'm assuming that that would be in the case of careers that are wildly divergent because otherwise you could make a good case that you could combine two professions into one. But you may have grown spiritually and feel like you have outgrown a certain type of job that you're doing now and want to move on, but you're just for some reason resistant to it. And that's something that you may be tossing around. As we end this year, we're looking at a Mercury retrograde, and that causes people to rethink things. Going into the new year, and this is important, I should have mentioned this earlier, because on the 1st of January, there's going to be a full moon in Cancer. And for Libra, that's your 10th house. So you may decide to end a particular career so that you can go in a different direction. And um, yeah, and it, it's, um, I'm trying to think of, um, oh, it's interesting too, because the month before that you have a full moon in your ninth house. So that's the house of long distance travel, in Gemini. Oh no, that's 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 going to be in your fifth house. Actually, the ninth house for you is yeah, that's Gemini's ninth house. What am I talking about? Yeah, so you're going to have um, a, a, some sort of a, something coming to a head in that sector that has to do with long distance travel a month before uh, this full moon in the in uh, your your career sector. So. Some of you may be even coming from abroad. Maybe you were abroad and you're coming back home and you're deciding, should I come back home? Um, and, and yeah, uh, one thing I didn't mention the first time around is that you're going to have Saturn entering your fourth house of home and family on December 20th. And uh, Pluto has taken up residence in this house. So you may have already gone through some real stuff related to family matters and Saturn can indicate duty um, you may be called back to take care of a family member in December late December and that's where this is coming from because you may feel like you have to make some kind of a choice between your career and something else so that might be um, going on with you and um, so let's see what else? I can't really, I can't really offer any um, particular concrete advice with the two of wands, except to say that if you're choosing between two types of um, jobs or careers, and one it's lucrative but you don't enjoy it, and the other one is kind of like you'd have to live on a shoestring, I personally would rather live on a shoestring because there's no sense in living a more outwardly prosperous life and feeling no sense of passion. The wands connect to passion and really feeling like you are totally invested in what you're doing. And so that's that's what um, I would go by. But who knows? I'm just saying this now. I don't have that decision to make. So maybe it's a little bit easier said than done. 
it depends on how how um, if you do have two two possibilities how that one job is affecting you. For some people, it's very stressful, and and their life their life is very um, impacted by a particular job, and so. Again, if it's if it's that stressful, it doesn't make sense to just stay there. It really doesn't. But there are many things to consider, I guess. One thing that I was looking at that I found very interesting, I, I was joking that Doreen Virtue would be proud of me for picking this this card because this is from the oh God, what's the Keepers of the Light Oracle deck. And it says, Master Jesus, forgiveness, you are on the path of light, love, and forgiveness. Father healing is possible at this time. One thing that I was trying to tie into this particular type of reading, which is more of a career reading or just law of attraction reading, is that forgiveness increases the flow, in my opinion. When you are feeling a sense of resentment, it's to me it's restricting your ability to to feel a sense of circulation throughout your your body but when i say body i'm also talking about on on the energetic level where it's kind of like and you can feel it like if there's somebody if there's somebody who you have a hard time dealing with if you hear their name and it reminds you of something that you feel that they did against you. And you, what do you feel? You feel yourself stiffening up. You may just feel that sense of negative energy. And that can't be good for anything related to trying to manifest. The more generous you can be of spirit, I feel like the more abundance can come to you in your life. It doesn't have anything to do with minimizing what somebody has done. Some people do some heinous things. But the more you can try to understand why that person did what they did, what was the motivation? And and not excusing them for it, but understanding them. Understanding is everything. Um, that doesn't mean you have to associate with people that you think don't have your best interests at heart but some people get consumed by bitterness and that's not good either so I'm going to just read what my uh, book says about it a man who needs no introduction through both the Gospels and the Gnostic Gospels, we have come to know Jesus as a great teacher, loving guide, and generous soul who, who accepts us all. Although he is the focal point of Christianity, he will respond to anyone who reaches out to him. He helps us overcome sacrificial love when we have to leave behind something in order to love, to get the love we want. He is also the light keeper we can call on for support with forgiveness. He reminds us that our connection to love is the most important connection we will ever create. His twin flame is Mary Magdalene. Um, <laughs> needless to say, this is not uh, Catholic doctrine, uh, or, or Baptist doctrine for that matter. Forgiveness is an act of self-love. You are being encouraged to know that whatever you have done to yourself or others, the divine is not condemning you. You don't have to forget what has happened, but you no longer need to allow your whole story to, de to be defined by a situation that doesn't support your happiness. Jesus is here to bring miraculous shifts of healing to you and all those around you and to release you from the bur burden of self-loathing. He wants you to know that he sees the child of God within you. He also brings clarity and healing to any situations concerning your father, either on heaven or on earth either in, on earth or in heaven. Um, one thing I just wanted to say about that is sometimes, too, forgiveness can come with um, some kind of financial situation, maybe a loss that you blame on your spouse or you blame on, oh, you know, like I just said here, 
if you have to drop everything and take care of a parent and you feel resentful and you feel like this person ruined my chances. I was just about to start this new job and then this happened. And um, in those type of situations, what I would say is that you have to wonder, though, if everything does happen for a reason and maybe this is where you need it to be. And even though on the surface it looks like I had to give up this job, I had to do this, I had to do that, it doesn't mean that it's not ultimately going to be for your highest good. The other thing I was saying in the first version of this reading regarding the Master Jesus card is that in terms of, you know, they mentioned the earthly father, like your own father, your family of origin. And certainly Saturn represents the father going into that fourth house. Um, there could be something regarding your father that has to do that you start to connect with in this next few years that kind of is an eye-opener for you about maybe certain things in, that have happened with you in general in your life. But going beyond that and just looking at family matters and how that connects to your career, some of you may be living inauthentic lives that are based on not wanting to upset your parents or other... I, I was looking at it from the authority figure standpoint, but it could be other people, but let's just like leave it there. And it may seem absurd if you're watching and you're 40 years old and saying, well, I'm not a kid anymore, but that doesn't mean that there are not people who are really doing a particular job because their parent wanted them to do that and they felt influenced by it, but it no longer feels right to them. And so that's something to also look at. Are you are you living somebody else's life, what they wanted for themselves, and they put it on you? And only you can, only you can free yourself from that situation. But sometimes all it takes is knowing that that's what's happening for you to just um, walk out, step out of it. So the next card is ceremony, invocation, and this is a card, and you can see she's got crystals on on that tray. This is about ritual. And so we have this, um, I'm trying to think, when is that? <sighs> I'm trying to think what the uh, house. Yeah, I guess so. No. Well, you have a full moon in the eighth house in Taurus in a few days on uh, November 4th. So that could be something regarding some other people's money. Maybe it's some um, some kind of uh, inheritance issue that finally gets resolved. Okay, I'm trying to think, is this, yeah, this is the Earth Magic deck. Whether through indifference, depression, life crisis, or any other manifestation of mental, emotional, or physical block blockages, you have drifted from the intimacy with spirit for which you yearn. It is important to do what you can to regain an experience of spiritual power that is contained within you and all around you. Do so by conducting a ceremony, one that involves not only spirit, but also material objects you consider sacred. Set up an altar in a convenient area that is apart from your usual living space. Start with representations of the four major elements, air, earth, fire, and water, and then add just a few sacred objects. Set your intention for the ceremony, whether as such as whether the purpose is for healing, celebration, or honoring a particular earth season or cycle. Then do an invocation to call upon your spirit guides. Breathe their presence and ask these divine beings to guide you throughout the process. 
Trust their guidance. Feel your heartbeat and keep breathing. Breath is the key to the actual experience of spirit, and creating a ceremony is the vehicle that supports this. And then the last card is Elder. Confidence, Mars in your sign. Entering your power, standing strong, you are a leader, stepping into the light. Let your truth be heard and felt by others. Make a stand in life. You carry deep inner wisdom. You are a teacher and a leader in the deepest sense of the world, words. You are a beacon for others. Um, being an elder and a tribal leader means speaking your truth, even if it's hard or even if you're afraid. If there's anyone you need to stand up to, this is the time. Being a leader means supporting others. So if there's anyone you need to support or make amends with, this is the time. I wanted to just tie those last two cards together. First of all, with ceremony, um, I personally, this is just my own disclosure on this, I don't do rituals. Like when I'm doing these readings, I don't uh, do anything special beforehand. And that's just me. I'm not a ritualistic type of a person. If that resonates with you, if it seems like that makes sense, then by all means, there are certainly many resources online that you can find to set up. I was thinking of setting up a crystal grid because I don't think that you have to really do anything. It's just there. And um, you can kind of set the intentions by the type of crystals you use about the, the what kind of energy that you wish to amplify. And so for me, that might be something that is acceptable, where it's a visual that reminds you, okay, I'm setting this up. I want to attract abundance into my life this month. So this is going to be there. And every time I look at it, it's like a vision board. And vision boards are another thing that you can do um, that is, you can even make it into your own little ceremony doing it at the full moon or what have you, if that's something that appeals to you. As for the Elder card, that is what I was talking about earlier, is that being true to yourself in terms of what it is that you're doing on a daily basis. Are you doing it because you want to or because you think that other people expect it of you? And you're the only one that can honor yourself enough to stand in your truth. Nobody else can. I can't convince you of the importance of it and nobody else can do it for you. So I'm just laying it at your feet, Libra, and um, hopefully this reading has helped you in some way. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Have a wonderful rest of 2017. Bye.